So um, welcome to the D town of Deerfield Board of Health Select Board meeting for um, March 30th, 2021. We're starting uh, around 4.48 p.m. Um, meetings normally held at the municipal offices are being held remotely with adequate alternative means of public access and where required public participation provided in accordance with the governor's March 12th, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, Mass General Law Chapter 30A, Section 20. Meetings are typically broadcast on Frontier Community Access Television. Remote meeting connections are found on our webpage. If you go to Town of Deerfield and down in the bottom right where the calendar is, you'll see all of our meetings coming up. You can click on this meeting there. That'll bring you to our agenda link. You can click on that agenda link. Then you can um, click on the Zoom link and uh, join the meeting there. For people watching on TV and would like to dial in, the number is 312-626-6799. The uh, meeting ID is 911-604-1580. And should you need a passcode, it's 57 zero zero one two um so people calling in or on the phone um should just mute their phones or if you're online you could always mute unless you're speaking to do that from the landlines you hit star six and you hit it again to unmute all attendees should wait to speak until other participants are this thing expand oh he's yep. how are you yep. you're live <laughs> yeah, sort of we got gotcha. you <laughs> um so uh, let's see. So I'll call the meeting to order, and uh, we have a couple of items for this uh, 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 zoning bylaw change. And um, and skip, we're maybe you can mute, 22. please. Yeah, skip, if you can mute. Oh, and you made it on too, Carolyn. Thank you. Great. How are you? Good. Good. I'm good. sorry. I no, was just signing somebody up for yep. waitlist. Oh no, it's more important. So um, we are here, and your meeting is open. And thank you. Is, you're welcome. Um, so the first item on the agenda is the bylaw, uh, zoning bylaw change. Um, and uh, how would you like to uh, uh, talk about this? Because um, we have, it's pretty complicated. Yeah, I would, I know last time we had discussed, um, you know, what we wanted to do with all the municipal projects we have coming up um, and looking at what other towns had done. And I, I think you, um, you Casey and you, I think we're going to talk with uh, our attorneys and yes. just kind of get, you know, get some feedback. And so I guess report back what you've, what you found and what they recommend, I guess. Um, so yes. Casey, do you want to summarize what Lisa and you and I discussed? Um, we, we picked the second option. So the board had discussed the second option at their last meeting and what we did I mean, Carolyn and I, when we talked to council, we advised her of the concerns and the questions that had come up. Mm -hmm. So in doing that, hold on, I'm looking for it. I just want to bring it up so I can see it. So in doing that, we tried to address some of the questions that you had, Trevor, mm -hmm. and made adjustments. And so Lisa made adjustments based on that conversation um to maintain the 50 feet of frontage but yes. reference the setback requirements that are already noted in the bylaws so except that front rear and side yard setback requirements noted here in shall apply and then notwithstanding the foregoing the planning board also gets some has some ability to weigh in on this and by waiving and reducing the setback requirements. So it, it brings them more into the process, I think. Does that accurately reflect it, Carolyn? Yes, and the reason why we decided to do it that way is because um, there was just no way Cumberland Farms is, you know, if we do something with Cumberland Farms, it's gonna be problematic. And um, so it was just better to um, have the option of the waiver the planning board giving a waiver um, versus trying to change all the setbacks in each um, zone. So, mm -hmm. so therefore there's less changes. And if you know we do do something with Cumberland Farms, which already has setback issues and, um, and does not meet the setback issues of the 25 feet in the center village district, we right. won't have any, we would not have any problems. It's better 
to do it on a project to project ba basis and have it be in the public interest, grandfathered yeah. kind of argument versus changing the setback for every new project. Right. And, um, potentially making people be, you know, upset that the town was trying to do something, yeah. you know, um, that wasn't, it wasn't, you know, fair. Checks and balances. Yeah. 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 Yes. So, so the setbacks, the current setbacks are not being changed whatsoever. And, mm -hmm. and the idea again is that we would allow, um, should Cumberland Farms project move forward, then we mm -hmm. would talk to the planning board about a waiver. Okay. So that also maintains some of the can, some of the other requirements in the bylaws, site plan review, et cetera. Which we intended to do anyways, right? Which you intended yeah. to do based on your my recollection of your conversation last week. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Yeah. So, do, I mean, does that make sense to both of you? It, yeah, does, it does. Because it gives other, other boards some say over what we're doing as well. And, um, you know, we can make the case and, and then the townspeople could um weigh in through multiple elected officials on what we're what we're trying to accomplish right and so it, it balances the need to have municipal facilities yeah. in conditions that that may not be always fit. always always well not even that but may not may not be it may seem different to residents mm -hmm. but it also maintains the rest of um the requirements so that it's there's more equality and more precision. Mm -hmm. I so, would say maybe so, that's inaccurate, but well, and it's less changes. It's it's less right. getting to people. Yeah. So um, I mean, we're just addressing the frontage, and that's it. So right. okay. um, it seemed like a, a really good thing. And then um, the uh, I mean, that was basically it. That was the discussion. Was yeah. it. So, so we we need we need to then make a motion. Or, so I will make the motion that we forward this on to the planning board for a public hearing. Okay. So I'll second Dave. that motion. Oh, go ahead. Dave, did you have any um, questions or anything before we vote on it? No, I, I'm very happy with this. Um, I, I think it's very straightforward. Yeah, it gives it a, a matter of checks and balances that we are looking for. So Right. Yeah. I, well, I think it's more common sense. So. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, if there's no further discussion, all those in favor? Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfram. Aye, Carolyn Ness. Thank you, Casey. Um, the next thing uh, were the budgets. And um, as part of the budget process, um, I had Casey Ford uh, on a job description for a social worker. Now, this is not in the Board of Health budget currently, but I wanted to bring it up because um, I was in discussion with uh, the DIG group um, and they had proposed a uh, social worker. And um, I, I believe that we will be able to, uh, to fund this under either the grant that um, the public health grant that's coming forward or um, the COVID money. And um, I think it's, it is, they made a very strong case for it. And I know we don't have really time to get in, into it, but I was hoping that we could put it into the Board of Health budget and, um, and then we could at some point discuss uh, the whole thing. Casey's got to forward it on to um, the personnel committee. I mean, there's a lot more work, but um, well, um, I feel it was so this is like the first time I've heard of that. So I, I yes, this is brand new, brand new as that, of Monday. That we're um, looking to hire a social worker for where? Um, this is this would work in conjunction with our police department and our in in the town uh, and a public health nurse. We, you know, our public health. We already have uh, expenditure for public health nurse, and this would be someone to work with our public health nurse. Um, and you know we're trying to do the uh, grant to cover our public health nurse for the next three years uh, to have more hours for all of Union 38. And also, um, so this would be part of it. Um, the, I met with DIG um, um, Friday and they forwarded, you know, and it was very constructive. So they put it together over the weekend and presented it on Monday. So, I mean, this is brand, brand new. And so I was hoping that you would not mind just putting it in the 
um, Board of Health budget for further discussion, because I know we don't have time tonight for it, but um, I think it is legitimate and um, based on uh, the needs of the pandemic and what is available in grant funding, I think we can grant fund it. So I, I'm more, I'm not feeling so stressed about trying to add additional uh, personnel, you know, that we couldn't afford. Yeah, I mean, I, well, um, there's a lot of questions around that. I had sent you a response, time, Carolyn, because, time. you know, and I, and I haven't, and I have not had time, right. just, you know, I'm trying to get the clinic together for Thursday. So I apologize. This is, you know, more last minute. So, um, so but, this would have to be in the board of health budget. I guess I have a lot of questions. I wonder if there could be some further discussion before we make that adjustment and finance is about to start. So Right. Well, I'm just ho hoping that it doesn't get lost and that we, you know, at least have the ability to further discuss it. That's all. Okay. I'll add this to next week's agenda, to the agenda for the seventh. Although yes. I do have to present the budgets relatively quickly. So I'm going to send an email around about that. Okay. okay. And the other thing for the seventh, we need to um, schedule um, a board of health um, vote on the spring sports. Um, I believe Darius is, is, has a meeting prior. So sometime after the seven o'clock hour, Casey, we need to uh, put a board of health uh, joint school committee meeting to, you know, I mean, or invite the school committee from Frontier to vote um, spring sports. Okay. Okay. I just, I just found out from Darius that they're voting at Tuesday, I believe. The sixth. Yeah, the sixth, so that we need to be able to do it for the seventh. Okay. So right now we have Berkshire Brewing Company's hearing, and then we have a joint here, tentatively a joint hearing on the capital plan. Right. So it would okay. be, it would be, they can't come early anyway. So it would be after yep. capital and okay, all that. Seven thirty. Right. Yep. Yeah, okay. seven thirty sounds good. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, so we can go on to um, the finance so committee. Meeting. Finance committee now has a meeting. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, uh, Trevor and Dave. Yeah, sure. Yep. So we're going to invite the, um, the fin uh, well, the finance, finance committee, committee to open their meeting. Okay. Yeah, they're going to open their meeting and then invite us. Right. I think. Okay. The uh, the only thing I concern I have on the top of my head is I don't want to have the funding of the social worker jeopardize our possibility of expanding our community nursing. Mm -hmm. Oh no, no, this would be in addition to. Um, okay. Yeah, no, this is in addition to Dave. Or uh, or or have it jeopardize our funding for the school resource officer. Yeah, no, this yeah. is in addition. And it would to be, have to be grant funded, you know, specifically. Yes. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. I, mean, I I understand that. And I feel like it needs to be more, you know, just not to keep laboring it, but I feel like it needs to be more on a uh, county level instead of a town level. Just um, not enough work. I, I think um, I, we could invite Dig to discuss, but they, yeah. they make a very compelling argument. You know, um, adding staff, even a part-time staff person of 19 hours is still significant. And, and yep. it was a compelling argument. It really was. Okay. And it was definitely COVID related um, that a, a lot of these trends have emerged. Yeah. It looks like Julie's not here yet. So I think that's why. Oh, okay. I was wondering. I was wondering she's why. on the phone. Yeah, I guess I may, maybe we'll wait for, for sure. Julie. otherwise, is it John who's uh, who's our victim? I guess as the vice chair, I'll call a meeting to order. Okay. Do we need Thanks, a motion Jeff. to do that? Or do we just say who's here? No. Okay, um, roll call then of who's here. John Pereski. Allison Vandervelden. Jeff Upton. Jim Cambius. 
Jessica Bonestead. And I think that's it, right? That should be six, one, two. Back here. Five. We've got two that aren't here yet. Who's the yeah, other Jack one? and Julie are missing, I believe. I'm I'm on the phone. Can you hear me? Yep. 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 Yeah, for some reason they won't let me let me in here, so that's understandable. <laughs> yep, that is understandable. <laughs> You're trying on the computer, Jeff? Yeah, I actually I just tried to jump on my iPad here. Uh, and and I've in the past I've been able to get right in, not a problem. But for some reason it won't let me in on my iPad. Okay. So I'll keep trying. I'll stay on the phone. That's all. Okay. It's unable okay. to detect my camera. Yeah. It could be worth if anybody's got Julie's number or texting her because it seems unlike her to be absent without uh, letting can, us know. I can send her a text. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Hopefully, she's okay. We also need Brenda. Can, can anybody on. hear me? Yep. Can you hear me? Yes. Just hear Skip. Oh, good. Oh. Uh, my camera, my camera doesn't seem to be working, and the audio on my on my computer doesn't seem to be working. So, oh. trying to um, participate, I guess, by phone. <laughs> okay, sounds good, Brenda. Good. So, Brenda, you're the 605 number, right? I'm the 605 number. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Julie, uh, mm, I hadn't heard from Julie in the last week, so I don't know if she um, she's had some extenuating circumstances. So I, I, um, I thought maybe I would have heard otherwise if she hadn't uh, been able to come. She was at last night's meeting, so I think... Um... I just sent her a text to just Okay. See. Great. All right. We could start with the, yeah. with the minutes. Um, there's enough of us here, I think, to approve those. Sounds good to me. Is there a motion? I'll make a motion to move the minutes to the last meeting. Can you say the date? It was. For the record. Uh, I, it was the 16th. I don't have. I don't have them in front of me. I believe it was March sixteenth. I believe so. I gotta grab my date book. Anybody want to? I'll second it. Approve the minutes of the March sixteenth meeting. I'll second it. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Right, John Perez. We need to take a roll call. All right, John Pareski, aye. I, I got to go by the pictures on the my screen here. Skip Homestead? Uh, aye. Allison? Aye. Amanda Velvin? Yep, yes, aye. <laughs> James Candius? Aye. Uh, Jeff Upton? Aye. And this, that's it, right? That's five. Okay. The minutes are, of the March 16th meeting have been approved. Um, Brenda, are you there? I am. You might want to, based on you gave us a package on the desk I, up front, you might want to give some guidance as to what we want to discuss. But I have one question. First, sure. Conservation Commission 171-5400 was previously approved on February 16th and we received a new sheet. We, we did. Um, the request by the new chair of the Conservation Commission is to up that budget to a thousand from the 700 originally uh, approved or recommended. Uh, and, and his reasoning for that is that uh, he is new and many of the um, uh, other committee members are also new and they were going to need some additional training. So um, uh, 
Julie, for the record, Julie just joined us and John Pachorik just joined us. Yes, I do. I'll finish this one and then Julie can take over. Um, I make a motion we approve the revised Conservation Commission budget account 171-5400 for $1,000. Previously approved for 700, but now to be 1,000. Did I say that right? Correct. Any seconds? Second. I'll second that. Okay, motions uh, made and seconded. Any discussion? Okay, I'll do a roll call. John well, Perucci, actually, I, 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 Hang on. I, I, go I ahead, did John. have a, a question to ask. So why does, I mean, I know that they said that there's some new members, but that's an awful lot of training money. <laughs> um, well, I, I think- um, What it entails? So Tim, Tim Hilchey, um, it feels that he's very green and he was going to go through some training this spring and use some of the current budget, which is fine. Um, a lot of their budget is normally used for postage. So postage uh, for mailings that they have to do. So uh, it could be, you know, they could be using 600 to 700 alone just for postage. So we're talking maybe three hundred dollars, four hundred dollars at the at the outside to use for training. Each of his training modules were going to cost fifty five dollars. So if you have him as being new and you have two committee members being new, I think that's what he said. I can't remember for sure. That could use up the rest of that fairly quickly. This is this is um, training that's available um, through the Mass Association of Conservation Commissions. And, um, and most of it is online, but once you take the online course, you also um, have access to, um, you know, the executive director at MACC and also DEP um, advisors. So it's, it's actually very good training for very little money. Okay, James. Okay, thank you. All right, I guess um, any further discussion? Okay, I'll do a roll call vote. Starting with me, John Pereski, aye. Skip. Abstain. Allison Van de Velden. Aye. James Cambius. Aye. John Pachorek. Aye. Julie Chalfant. I'm going to abstain since I came in late. Sorry? I'm going to abstain since I came in late. Okay. And Jeff Upton. I'll abstain. So I think it's approved 502. I think there were three abstentions. Actually. Oh, there were three. I'm sorry. 403. 403. And so it's approved. And Julie, you're. Chair, so you want to take over, please? Sure. Um, I apologize for running late. So, Brenda, do you have your usual list for us? I do, and I I think we'll we'll wait with the rest of the wastewater treatment plant since Zach is on the line, and I think we'll go ahead and go to the um, the South County EMS budget. Does that sound all right to everyone? Yeah. Um, I'd like to just disclose that um, I'll be discussing the budget in full, but if there's any discussion of the director's salary, that's a conflict of interest for me, and I would recuse myself since he is an immediate family member. <laughs> you can rectify that. <laughs> yes, that's it. You guys can talk about his pay without me. <laughs> I just want to say thank uh, you to Brenda um, before we go move on. Just she she did a wonderful <coughs> job putting our packets together. So thank you, Brenda. Oh, you're you're quite welcome. I, I was just going to ask to make sure that everyone was able to pick theirs up and that they would have them um, on hand for tonight. Yes. <laughs> yes, and I, I you did a wonderful job. That's why I wanted to tell you it was so organized. It was great. 
Thank you. Well, I thought I thought extra notes would be helpful. Yes, it, it, absolutely. So thank you. Great. So, um, Julie, do you want to just have Zach go ahead and go through it, or should we yes. be asking if people have specific questions? What What do you What's your thought? Zach, why don't you give us an overview? All right, we'll do. <clears throat> excuse me. Will do. Um, normally what I like to do is I start at the top of the budget and then work down to the final number. If um, that sounds good to everybody here, sometimes people like to start at the bottom, but uh, I prefer to kind of set the scene first. Um, this should be, uh, I've dated this 315.21 version 5.0. It should be the one that you have in hand. Um, and if you have an older version, this one is less money. So it's only going to be good news if you get surprised at anything. Um, Zach, let me, let me just confirm that the that the um, assessment to the town of Deerfield on this one is three hundred and nine thousand two forty three. Does that agree with yes. what you've got? Mm -hmm. Yep. Great. Down okay. The then dollar. then Great. yes, everyone everyone has the current current version. All right. Very good. Um, Starting at the top of our budget, the most expensive uh, portion of a department like ourselves is going to be staffing. And uh, a quick reminder to everybody, as an enterprise fund and as a regional service, we also include our employee benefits. Those are not hidden anywhere else in the town. We, we do uh, hold ourselves responsible for all of those. So based on the direction of the town of Deerfield being a town of Deerfield department, um, I've calculated the customary step for all of our full-time employees, their annual step increase. There is no COLA cost of living adjustment included in that, so just the step. We do have two employees that have been with the department for um, well, nearly 20 years now. They are maxed out at a step 10, so I believe they were calculated as a 1% increase. So there's no step for them, they're at step 10, but they would be receiving a 1% here. Um, and then also uh, employee benefits. So, um, uh, so I should say that the salaries with those steps alone went up 2.7%. Uh, and then the benefits went up 5%. Um, and those are all the numbers that are provided to me and the department from the town of Deerfield, um, as far as the insurance goes, and then um, Franklin County retirement for those benefits and things like that. So those are numbers that are provided to us that we are accountable for. Uh, and that is the change there. Um, a, a far second in expense at, uh, in our budget is uh, just operating expenses. Uh, just a very small increase from last year, um, 306,000 last year to 308,000 this year. Um, and that's just very minor adjustments in our um, billing expenses and our radio system fees. Those are the fees that we pay to Franklin Regional Council of Governments for using the radio system that is countywide. That money supports that system and repairs that system. So that goes up every year with the cost of maintenance. And then towards the bottom, we have the uh, Deerfield indirect costs. So that is the money that South County EMS pays to the town of Deerfield for all of the associated administrative stuff the town hall stuff, the town administrator, um, clerk, treasurer, collector, the accountant, all those things. Uh, that is calculated based on um, basically South County's portion of the overall town of Deerfield budget and um, as a metric for what type of burden we, we place on the town. So that number is provided to me um, by Brenda um, and uh, I'm sure she could elaborate if we want to hear it, but basically it's down for fiscal year 22, just the way that those um, numbers are calculated. We we had a, some capital expenditures in 2020, uh, which were calculated into the 21 indirects, but none in 21. So that is not adding to any sort of indirect cost in 22. Um, That's correct. So yeah, yeah. great. Um, so uh, the very the very bottom line there uh, to run a 24 seven paramedic level service that has one ambulance on 24 seven and has additional staff during our busy hours, soup to nuts, staff salaries, benefits, equipment, billing, all that stuff 
uh, comes to uh, just over $1.4 million in fiscal year 22. So that's the cost of doing business, but uh, we have some things that offset that. So um, the first number that we take um, off of that would be the money that we anticipate to receive in our billing revenue. So we have to pay ahead of time, right, for our service to be ready 24-7, but then our fee-for-service model, just like a regular uh, ambulance service you'd find anywhere else. If somebody uses our service, we charge their health insurance, and we anticipate that that revenue for fiscal year 22 will be $525,000. Um, that's been pretty consistent uh, the past few years. It did trend upwards as we kind of figured out how many calls we're going to be doing, what our revenue was going to be doing, things like that. Um, I'm not adjusting that estimation for 22. Um, 21 was so weird with COVID. We we met our revenue projection because we always make it a little bit conservative. Um, I should say, um, yes, right. So the, the revenue estimation is conservative. So we typically get a little bit more so we can weather things like a COVID outbreak or something like that where call volume drops off. So we subtract that from our total expenses. Uh, and then we also have retained earnings. So as I'm sure you're all aware, as a enterprise fund, any money that isn't spent in the previous fiscal years um, is retained within South County EMS. Um, and this is what allows us to be conservative on our billing estimations, because if we generate revenue above and beyond what we estimated, it rolls back into the following year. And then that goes towards reducing the assessment towards the member town. So it's it's a wash, it's a net zero um, as far as our actual raising of the money. So that is for fiscal year 22, $310,401. Um, the thing to keep in mind with that number is it does grow over time because of our ambulance replacement schedule. So every year um, we take a little bit of that revenue from billing uh, above what we anticipated and we put it aside. So when it comes time to uh, buy a new ambulance to replace one of our ambulances, we have the money on hand to do that. And by nature of it being an enterprise fund, that money just kind of sits and collects in this overall larger fund. We can't put it into an ambulance fund where it's very clear what it's for. It just kind of sits there and grows. So um, if you're looking at previous years, you'll notice that number trends up and it will continue to trend up for the next few years until we purchase our ambulance and then it will drop back off. So that's um, that number is, is right in line where we would expect it to be. So when we remove our um, billing revenue and the retained earnings that go back into um, <coughs> back towards the budget, we're left with $835,000 that we need to come up with to run the department 24 seven. And that is further divided up into the three member towns. So the town of Deerfield pays 51.76% uh, of that. And that share is $309,243 for fiscal year 22. So that $309,000 is buying Deerfield that $1.4 million service. Um, that's how that works. Uh, that number is up a little bit um, from last year. It's up 3% from last year. That's basically um, all the salary and mostly the benefits expenses going up is reflected in that 3%. Um, so while we are up from last year, overall, over the last, I think it's four or five years, we're actually down 23%. Um, I think Carolyn has a question over there. You want to ask Carolyn? Um, I, well, actually, it's more of a statement. Um, uh, the radio contract was awarded, you know, the grant was awarded. And um, t as a matter of fact, John had it, John Petrork had it today. So, um, so the radio, new radio purchases and the system maintenance um, will be adjusted down. So um, actually, it might uh, be a lot, a few thousand less. Great. Yeah. I, I don't um, know um, 100% if it removes the entire charge of $7,400 that you put in there, but um, it will be less. Great. Yeah, and, and that is that is a number supplied to us. So I will be happy to adjust that um, when we get yeah, that well, number. Yeah. Yeah. So I, no. yeah, thank you. Um, so like I said, I, you know, 
23, I think the Deerfield assessment is up $9,600 from last year. Um, but overall trending, we're still trending down. So we're down 23% from our initial expenditures. And that's just us figuring out, getting our sea legs, kind of narrowing in exactly what these expenses are over time. Um, I see John Presky and I see John Pachurik. Presky, you want to go first? Sure. Um, the retained earnings of 310401 is that the actual retained earnings? Or nope. the actual retained earnings more and you've reduced it on here to allow for the purchase of the ambulance? So the, the actual certified retained earnings were $435,401. Of that, 62,000 was already set aside in fiscal year 21 for ambulance replacement. And then we're gonna set aside another 62,000. Um, it's actually 62,500. So a total of 125,000 of that gets taken out of that retained earnings and that's what leaves us with the three hundred and ten thousand four hundred and one dollars um okay. thank you th the other thing i want to point out is of that three hundred and ten four hundred and one one hundred thousand is our um operational reserve that is in our budget that is carried over year after year um so that's not like an extra $100,000 that we got that we weren't expecting, that's actually $100,000 that we are just carrying over all the time. It's almost like a minimum balance of retained earnings if you wanna think about it that way. Um, uh, John Pachurik Sr., you have a question? Yes, I have uh, three or four of them. First Great. of all, could you explain the telephone and internet? It says Comcast, internet, television, FirstNet, and TPX. Okay. Um, so that is all. Uh, uh, let me see if I can. Yeah. So Comcast Internet Television, that is our obviously our, our station television, but also the internet that we have for our department. So that includes not just the computer internet stuff, but all of our uploading and um, patient care reports, those are all hosted offsite in a secure server. That's all done through our internet connection here at the station. So that is internet and um, television for the station. First Let me ask net, you one question on the television. Yeah. My understanding is that we have an agreement with Comcast that they provide the television connection to every one of our town buildings free. Are you paying for that? We are. I, I was told that we are responsible for paying that ourselves. Um, if that is incorrect, then I would like to know that. Yeah, I, I'd like to get that clarified. Well, I'd like to request that the select board look into that because the agreement we used to have with Comcast was that they would provide cable TV to each one of our town buildings for free. That's what was in the original agreement back a long time ago. I don't know if it's changed since then. Um, Interesting. Yeah. We, All right. Yeah, right. we can look into it, John. I. Um, well, that's all I'm asking. That's probably in the cable it. franchise agreement. Yeah. yeah, it is. Okay. So if it's but a way of twenty dollars yeah. or fifty dollars a month, it's better off to save something if we can. That's yeah, absolutely. Reason I ask that question. The second uh, question you, I have is, yeah. do you pay a sewer bill? Do we pay a sewer bill? Do we pay a sewer bill? Uh, That's a great question, John. We pay a water know. bill. <laughs> Could that be an indirect cost? No. no. No, um, if if there is a sewer bill for that building, I believe that the town would pick that up and Kevin would be the one to answer that question. Um, I don't know unless Casey Casey knows anything different than I do. Why would the town I don't, but I'll see if I can find out. Town? Because uh, because the town towns. is responsible for the building. I don't I don't know. Um, I, I, I will tell you this, we do pay our water and our electric bills separately. Um, I don't ever recall seeing a sewer bill come across my desk or through the mailbox. Um, so 
I don't know if it's going someplace else or we're just not getting billed for it. Well, I know where it's all going. <laughs> <laughs> My last question. Do you pay any OPEB fees? Oh, yes. So that is um, down towards the bottom. Uh, actually, it's just below. It's included within the transfer of the Deerfield General Fund. Thank you for reminding me. So um, our indirect costs are 55345 And then our OPEB is $2,080. That was um, based on, uh, what was it we decided last year? It was a percentage of know, the overall same cost. Yes, we cannot the yeah. same percent. Yes, same, right. Percent. Same percent that we use for the town of Deerfield. Yeah, yep. you, can't, so, you can't use a different percent. Yep. So so whether or not that's enough, that's not my battle. All I know is that South County EMS is um, taking responsibility for those costs and and throwing it into our uh, assessments like we would any other cost. And then let me ask the selectman a question. When are we going to have the next uh, session on OPEB funding? The next class that we're supposed to have. Um, well, John, you know, my, my feeling is it's way underfunded. Oh, um, I'm, I'm open for a discussion at any time. Um, uh, I, Trevor has suggested, and I think even Dave has brought up the fact if we get a lump sum money from like marijuana or something like that coming in oh, that we need I know. to put you it said that the last meeting i think that, that's a great idea but we haven't had my only question is this when we know it's way underfunded you know it, i know it, and everybody else does but i'd like to see how we get that corrected that's mm -hmm. thank yeah, you uh, me too you know that's been my argument for many years john uh, john i'll talk with um barb about um Getting, getting somebody in to hold a, another session because I know that we're, I think our assessments are coming up again or I know she meets with them. I think, I think it's just springtime if I remember correctly. You're right. I think it is. So I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll put it on my list to do that. Thank you, Trevor. Thank you. And thank you, John, for being willing to discuss it again. I know no one wants to fund it, but it is really important that we do that. Uh, one of the philosophies before was that we could fund it after we finished paying for our retirement funding, which is in about 2033. Mm. But I agree with you. I don't think we should wait quite that long. I just want to make sure that we're doing something to take care of the OPEB potential problem mm. that will be cropping up in the future. Yep. Thank you. I agree. That's all I have for questions. Thank you. Thanks, John. I have a question for you too. Um, can you talk about receipts and your percentage of like how much of what you're owed you actually collect from people and how does that compare to, I guess their averages that most it, people collect or? <laughs> yeah, um, I, the, the bottom line is we do very well. Um, we are collecting uh, more than is typical uh, for medical billing. Um, part of that is because of the uh, the base that we have of people in town. They tend to be privately insured or if we're doing car accidents, people have car insurance. Um, so it's easier to collect that money. It's also because we are um, good at our record keeping and efficient in the way that we keep those records and they get uploaded to a central database that our billing company can actually pull from directly and they have agreements with the hospital. So if there's missing information, they can actually pull that insurance information from them. So when it comes to um, private insurance, we are in the very high 90 percentile of collections. Um, I haven't pulled the numbers recently. Uh, there, It's like 96 and change, 97, depending on um, exactly how you cut those numbers. But um, the that missing percentage is usually the patients who are um say uh, students at the boarding schools who parents live overseas and they are a, you know, a resident of a foreign country and those bills kind of get lost or they're um like small copay amounts that we don't 
collect from individuals. So we get the vast majority of the money and then we're missing a hundred or we're missing like $50 or $150 there. When you get to um, Medicare, Medicaid um, patients, that percentage is lower. Ours is, I think in the high seventies or low eighties, I'd have to check on that. Um, but again, that is much better than is typical. Um, and part, and that is all due to timely billing. That is because we are efficient in that and our billing company does its job well. Um, that difference, that 13% difference of what we build and what we collect is totally typical. It is illegal for us to charge different amounts to different people. So we charge the full amount to everybody. And then the government Medicare says, that's great that you want that, but we're not gonna pay it, we'll pay you. 75% of it. Um, and so we accept that 75% because of the government. And then that 25%, we end up writing off eventually. Um, we, we need to get back in the habit of writing some stuff off now. Um, that's just been collecting. That's normal stuff, but we need to get back to uh, doing that bookkeeping. Um, so our percentage is higher uh, on that than a lot of places and totally in line, totally good. Um, and we actually have alerts set up with Comstar where if we drop below a certain threshold, if, if our collections drop below the average, it flags in the system, I get flagged, they get flagged, and we do basically an audit and a review of what might be happening where that failure lies. And we've never had that happen, actually. So. Sounds promising. Anyone else? Yeah, I've got a question, and I'm not sure that it has a whole lot to do with the budget, but since the selectmen are here and Zach is here, and one of the things that we're going through at this point in time is trying to get everyone vaccinated, I'm sure we have people in these three towns who, for whatever reason, can't come, leave the home or come to the site where we're giving vaccine, I was wondering, have you talked with Zach or has the selectman talked with Zach to see if there's a way that, uh, you know, Zach and the ambulance service can provide that service to go out and, and reach some of those who can't leave their homes? Um, we might be uh, doing that in the future, but right now we're in the um, homebound program uh, through the state and our vaccine is, is very um, regulated. So right now, Lisa is going to each household um that is you know described as homebound and meets the correct criteria i think we, you know once we have more vaccine that's be a real possibility um but right now it's very constricted um by the state and is mandated by the state very carefully so um actually there's no opportunity at the moment but yeah but Lisa, in the future we're going to yes i i, I, I would thought? like i would like to add that um, I, I reached out to your son, Emma Dragon, who I'm actually very good friends with uh, in Amherst, uh, formerly Hadley. Um, I'm on a disaster team with her that to see what their model was in Amherst. So Amherst is doing a homebound vaccination model in which they put two paramedics in an ambulance along with a public health nurse, and they've been doing the rounds. They have somebody doing the administration on the back end to schedule and book those appointments, and they go out into the community and they do it with an ambulance. Um, I spoke with Lisa White um, two or three weeks ago now to talk about what the homebound vaccination plan was. Uh, and in coordination with her, as Carolyn mentioned, she's got a system that is more efficient and less expensive than having South County EMS team up with a public health nurse and do it. Uh, the, the, the catches here are, um, in order for paramedics to provide that vaccination, we are able to, but Department of Public Health says that we must be doing it in the capacity of our employment with a licensed ambulance service. So if I'm sending somebody out in an ambulance, being under our license, doing it on our behalf, we have to compensate them. And so we can't volunteer our services the same way some of the other um, nurses and healthcare providers in the community can. And additionally, we have to go with two people and an ambulance. We can't go by ourselves. That's regulatory requirements. And um, we're staffed right now, South County EMS, between our full-time staffing and our per diems to cover our 911 calls. 
our emergency 911 calls. We're not, we don't have the staffing capacity to be doing additional jobs. So in order for us to do vaccinations, either we're paying overtime in order for people to do it, or we're taking away from our 911 ambulance coverage, which obviously isn't an option. So we have the plan, we have the model to be doing it with EMS, but right now, um, today on March 30th, Lisa White is fully under control. She's got a much more efficient model to do it. Um, and my understanding is that they've just, they've been doing it for weeks now and, and with great success, so. They also did not have um, as many as you think. We did, we did look, you know, hard about, you know, working with Life Path and, and others to find, you know, those homebound uh, people that, you know, just couldn't get out or whatever. And they did come up with a list for sure, but it, it was surprisingly smaller than I would have expected. Um, but, and so Lisa, each time we get, you know, a number of doses into the, into the clinic, she's, you know, she, she sets aside maybe 10 and her and um, it, uh, Kathy Jackie Choke, Cho. Jackie Jackie Cho. Cho. Yeah. they go out and uh, they, they, they hit the ones that they can, they can do. And luckily they've been some J and J. So it's been a, a one and done and they don't have to come back a second time. So it seems to be working at the moment. We'll definitely keep our eye on it for, you know, as, 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 as the more cases we get, plus the, the, um, you know, the eligibility opens up, we may be able to do more. I, and I was just going to say, um, certainly when the definition of the state's definition of homebound is a little bit looser, it's very strict at the moment. And so, um, and that's why the, our numbers are pretty low, actually. Um, but they are getting done. And um, I, I have to say, everybody is doing a good job. Yeah, you, you, you certainly answered, you've all certainly answered my question. I just want to make sure that, that that was out there and that we weren't missing anyone. Yep. Um, and it has nothing to do with the budget, so we can move on as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> so I think we actually don't have a motion yet. Make a motion we approve this budget. Second. All right, so we have moved and seconded for the SCEMS Enterprise budget. Any further discussion or questions, anybody? I don't see any, so let's do our roll call vote. Jim Cambius. Aye. John Pareski. Aye. Skip Olmstead. Aye. John Paturk. Aye. Jeff Upton. Aye. Julie Chalfant, aye. Allison Van Velden. Aye. All right, that's a seven zero zero passes. Zach, for coming and talking to us. Thank you very much. Gets, gets great. Great, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> See you, Zach. All right. I think Christina's next on our agenda, right, Brenda? Uh, yes, Christina is next. Beautiful. Um, where are you? 541. So, Christina, everybody has a copy of all three of your budgets. Okay. Um, obviously, the assessment budget is really the one you want to go through because that is the one that will be voted. Um, well, the other two are ancillary, but totally part of your part of your budget. So that's why they have those to look at as well. Right. And um, the other two are also um, unknown. I usually by now, by months ago, have a number for the state for those grants. And they're saying I probably won't have a number till July. So um, the best advice they gave was to just use the, the, the numbers from last year. So um, just to put that out too, that those um, two grants, you know, that could be changing, obviously. Um, and there's, and also, um, I just wanted to mention the other unknown is um, the position of outreach coordinator. Um, I, I just, I just plugged in a number with what I thought 
would be good for hours and a salary. Obviously, I wouldn't be the one deciding that. I recognize that, but I put, but I put, kind of put in where I thought around we would be. So, all right, um, moving on. Um, this here's the budget from last year is um, only gone, up, which I know it shouldn't go up at all, but. <laughs> It's only gone up 3.18%, which if you look at the previous years, um, that's a lot smaller because um, we had been building up programs that had uh, historically been underfunded. Um, the, the big increases, um, you know, obviously there, there's a salary, um, a, a step increase for myself. So that's one of them. Um, slight admin increase. Um, the, the big one is um, there's now $5,000 listed for the van that was donated to the South County Senior Center. Um, in my van plan where I had written out, which actually perhaps I, um, you know, I can send to anyone that wants to see that, um, how that would work. Um, I actually was estimated it would be about a $7,000 a year cost, but I recognize that this isn't something we're about to start, right? And, you know, even, well, I know the year starts in July, but I, I just feel like it's not going to be something that starts right away. And we'll just have to take it a little slower um, out of um, out of the goal of keeping the budget as flat as possible and not increasing that number anymore. Um, so those are, and then there was a couple of things um, that I moved to the SIG grant fund to take them out of the appropriations. We had some staff mileage that we historic, the towns historically paid. I moved that to the SIG fund. Um, I also moved all the office supplies. The office supplies used to be split. I just put it all um, into the SIG fund again to take, you know, it, with the with the goal of decreasing the appropriated fund that you're voting on. Um, and then of, co of course there's a, oh the other thing was the Comcast bill. The Comcast bill went up quite a bit, and. Um, I, I can't tell you the amount of hours I spent talking to probably, I'm not even kidding, 20 people there. And that, trust me, that is the lowest we can get right now. So it wasn't a matter of negotiating any better plan. Um, that but what it, I, apparently we were in a reduced plan and it had expired. Um, I didn't know that was coming. Um, just all of a sudden I noticed an invoice was a lot higher than the previous one. So I called them up right away and um, it is lower than what it was going to go to because I switched into a new plan. But um, just to mention why that's gone up so much. Any questions specifically you'd like me to talk about? I got one question on your salary. Mm hmm. Are you going from fifty thousand nine forty seven to fifty three five thirty six? Yes. That's a thousand five hundred eighty nine dollar an increase of five percent. I didn't know all the town employees were getting five percent. It well, I can't speak to that. That was just the next step, so I put it in. But um. It, and I did confirm that that is the next step up. She went from a from a grade four step three in 2021 to a grade four step four in 2022. So she went up a grade and a step. Nope, just, oh. a, just a step. Didn't you just say grade step. three She's to a, grade four? Nope, grade four, step three to grade four, step four. I apologize if I said it incorrectly. I have those Mustang payments to make. <laughs> I just look at this and I say, being retired, I get 1.6% increase in my retirement pay and you're getting a 5% increase. I want to know what I'm getting for it. That's all. 5%. $2,500 increase. I can guarantee you 
Social Security don't give you anything near that. Well, I will say, John, you're getting quite a, a bargain because I've been I've been working up to a hundred hours uh, a pay period for a long time now, but you're paying me for eight for uh, eighty hours, so you're getting a bargain. You're on salary, though. <laughs> what was that? You're on salary. I know that was it was a joke. I'm just saying I'm working more hours and I'm getting paid the same. So well guess what? Everybody in the town has always done that. But I was when just I just started as a selectman, I was getting twelve hundred dollars a year. That was part of it. You accept the pay and you don't <laughs> whine about it. You just accept the pay for what it is. This is I want to feel inappropriate, Jack. This is I, I just want to step in. If we have if we have um, substantive comments about the salary and the and the compensation scale, I think we can frame the discussion around that. But I think um, it is starting to feel inappropriate to discuss with the director a, a pay scale that she actually has no influence over and may very well be deserving of regardless of if social security is underpaying <laughs> what i'm saying is when you get a five percent increase i didn't realize there was that much of a discrepancy in our different schedules i didn't think All it right, went I up think for, um, four and a half thousand dollars a year That's why I'm let's move on from the discussion of this skip you had a question I, yeah i do we have do we have a salary schedule that we're using for next year's budget or the 22 budget? Because I don't seem to have a copy of it if we do. It's the same as 2021. There is no change. So the compensation plan did not change at all? No. John, even, though, as, even though, as John pointed out, Social Security is increasing by 1.6%. I'm not sure what it is increasing by, to be honest with you, but. Skip, it's Casey. <laughs> we're in the middle of a class cop study, so we're trying to take that into account. The Jeff board has Upton, not voted a I... cost of living allowance. Jeff Upton, can I speak? Of course. Ahead, Jeff. Yes, I just, I just want to comment that this should come as no surprise. Uh, we discussed this salary schedule a couple of years back, and everybody was forewarned that this was going to happen, and it was voted and approved. And I spoke against it, if people remember, because I was afraid that something like this is going to happen, and you're going to see some large increases, and that was going to affect your budgets. Not only do you see large increases in the salary, but you also see large increases in the retirement. At this point in time, and I understand where John's coming from, it's a little frustrating when you see those percentages, but you know the horse is already out of the barn. This was voted last year and the year before, and people did not heed to the, to the warning. Now it's a situation where these people, different departments, are building their budgets, and you're seeing these increases, but these increases are coming because of what was voted a year and two years ago as far as the salary schedule. And people were forewarned that this was going to happen, but was still voted and approved. So I think the water is under the bridge. Is it... Uh, you know, comfortable? No, it's not. But the damage's already been done. These raises have been voted. The salary schedule was approved, and hopefully, we pay attention going forward on our salary schedule. So, as far as the discussion, uh, I think it's a little too late to have this discussion on past salary uh, scale approvals. Hopefully, people keep that in mind going forward so we can review the salary schedules or propose salary schedules a little closer. Thank you. That's all I have to say about that. Um, thanks, Jeff. John Pareski, you're up. I just want to clarify that that vote Jeff is talking about was made at the town meeting. 
Yeah. By the taxpayers. That that's is who, correct. That's who approved it. Yep. Carolyn, go ahead. Uh, Julie, I'm really sorry. The select board has to leave um, to go to a tabletop drill um, on the flooding. Uh, it's just you and me, Carolyn. Oh, just it's oh. just you and me. <laughs> oh, Tre I thought Trevor and Dave were coming. They didn't indicate they wanted an RSVP. I think I <laughs> oh, so it's just you and me. I've already, no, I've already no, got I think, the, Yeah, I already Trevor, the, I think is signed RSVP. up. Yeah. Um, and I, I don't know how long Dave, I can make it, but yeah. Well, thank you. I just wanted to. Uh, sorry, Carolyn. No, no, no. So thank you, everyone. I'm not. We have at least more, a couple more hours worth of a drill. So I just wanted to say thank you very much and appreciate it. And hopefully, I will send a link to David as well, so you will have it, David. Okay. Thank you. I, bye. I just, I bye. I just wanted to add. I, I hope everyone knows I was joking about my we salary. Do, <laughs> we do, like, we yeah. do, Christina. I, I want to make that clear. <laughs> <laughs> we got to uh, know it and wasn't. Someone mentioned. I'm just going. You know, the same with Sue. Um, and the same when we had a third employee. We just, you know, it goes up by step. What, um. Yeah. You know, yeah. regardless. So yeah, we understand. Uh, we totally okay. it's not not anything you, yeah. you said. I just didn't want that to come across wrong. <laughs> Understood. No problem. We appreciate all your work for sure, especially this year. Thank you. All right. I don't think we have a motion on the table. Anybody like to make a motion? I'll move the budget as presented. I'll second it. John Pareski seconds. All right, we moved and seconded for Senior Center Expense 541-5420 um, as presented. Any further discussion or questions? All right, Jim Cambius. Aye. John Pareski. Aye. Skip Olmstead. Aye. John Paturk. Aye. Jeff Upton. Aye. Julie Chalfin, aye. Allison Vanderbelden. Aye. All right, that passes 700. Thank you, Christina. Thank you yeah, all. thanks for Thank coming you and presenting. Very much. <laughs> Have a good evening, everyone. <laughs> you do too. You too, Christina. Thank you, Christina. So we have we have Jack Davy with us now. Um, he had requested to come and talk about the capital budget, and each of you were given a copy of the updated plan in your packets. Yeah. That was a little change, Julie. You did get that email from me, I, I, I assume. Yes, thank good. you. Good. Okay. Good evening, everyone. So, so everyone does have this capital projects plan that okay but so, so i'm just uh i'm just going to go through uh the spreadsheet basically uh this year the capital committee was presented with something like 26 requests which uh we kind of boiled down to i think 18 and on your spreadsheet, um, you'll see going starting from the left, the first column is uh, fiscal year 2021 town meeting approvals. The second is fiscal year 2022, this year's requests, whether we, the next column is whether we uh, recommended. It, it, it's, uh, Headed approved. We don't really approve anything. We just make a recommendation. Um, and then the next column is fiscal year 2022 recommended and the amount. And uh, the next column is priorities. We made a priority list from one to 18, one being the most important, the, the sewage treatment plant. And 18 being what we uh, felt to be the, the uh, so the first item on the list is uh, the contribution to the capital stabilization fund of two hundred fifty thousand dollars, which we recommend. 
and we um, we uh, we call that a, a 16 on our priority list. So quite a ways down on the priority list. Uh, can I can I interrupt for just a second? What's the date? I just want to make sure we're all working with the same plan. What I've got is two five twenty one. No, there's a new one, 324-21. Uh, yeah, 324-21. It okay. was in the latest packet. I just have to go see where I put it, that's all. Please go ahead without me, or I will continue to listen. Okay. Uh, it's pretty self-explanatory, Skip, anyway. Yeah. Uh, so, so the second uh, the second, re second group of requests is from the Deerfield Elementary School. And the elementary school has, um, over the past few years, uh, made small requests uh, to do upgrades to their facility. And this year they made two requests. One is for $15,300 for restroom renovations, which we recommended. We, and we ranked that at number seven. And um, the other one was, for, was to uh, continue to replace flooring with, um, to tear up the, uh, the old carpeting and replace it with um, vinyl floor. And that's 21,200 and we rank that at number eight. Uh, the next request is from uh, Frontier Regional School and uh, that was for um, cleaning the ducts, the duct work in the gym and in the um, auditorium and also replacing the auditorium curtain. Um, Deerfield's, um, Deerfield's share of that is 15,242. Obviously the total amount is, is much larger um, for all three towns, but our share is 15,242. And um, we did recommend that, we put that at number 18. The next item has to do with um, it, the, uh, it's marked uh, MVP grant match climate resiliency. In fact, what it is, is the upgrade of the Leary lot um, uh, in, uh, in an environmentally friendly way with pervious paving, et cetera. Um, the request is for $384,000. Um, there is potentially a grant, a grant that goes along with that, which I think is $96,000. Um, the, the, this request was a little bit vague in terms of the actual final cost and the possibility of getting the grant. So this is something that we tabled for this year and we put it into fiscal year 2023. Um, the next item is again labeled MVP grant match wastewater treatment plant. Um, this is actually for upgrading the outflow pipe from the South Deerfield plant. And again, it's, um, it's a, a little bit premature uh, with everything else that's going on in town. It, it, this is another, um, Another item that we tabled and we, we pushed it forward into fiscal year 2023. Uh, also, um, there was a request from the select board for um, under land purchases for $125,000 to potentially purchase the Cumberland Farm Store. And again, because um, there were a lot of questions around it. Uh, also, Cumberland Farms hasn't responded to, uh, to any uh, uh, requests from the town to discuss this. Um, so we pushed that again into uh, fiscal year 2023. And I just want to comment on that, that uh, many committee members, many of our committee members were concerned that we would purchase Cumberland Farms 
uh, and then become responsible for the environmental cleanup costs, which no one, no one has any intention of purchasing that and then taking on an environmental cleanup. So just, just to clarify. Um, Jack, can I ask a question? Are the, are the tanks still in the ground? Um, the fuel tanks? I believe so, but I, you know, really, I don't, I don't know. There's, there's a lot of questions about that. The tanks are still in the ground. Okay, so. And they have one more no, it, year to, to remove those per agreement when they move to the new location. Oh, they do. So they're supposed to remove the tanks and the pumps? Within the next year, yes. But there, you know, there could be other contamination too. So. Yeah, the, the good thing about it is that the tanks that are in there are the newer double wall tanks. Oh, they are? So. Okay, so it would it would be nice to get that eyesore out of there, in you know by some means. But um, as far as the capital committee, we you know, we just deferred that until uh, 2023. So the next category is the municipal offices, and um, the the first request was for was actually for um, I don't know why this is under municipal offices, but uh, the first request was for uh, town common design and improvements, and again, it's kind of it's kind of mislabeled. The fiscal year 2021 request was forty thousand dollars, which was for an uh, ongoing design work, which Berkshire uh, Design is doing, and and I guess hasn't completed. The fifty-five thousand is is kind of a placeholder for um, actual construction, but since the design isn't done, the there really isn't a firm estimate of how much it would cost to upgrade the common, and uh, it, it it seems like now, um, according to Trevor, it's pushing around two hundred fifty thousand dollars. So. Uh, so we tabled this item and, um, you know, we, we just need more information for, before we can di really dig into it. The next item is a request um, for a town office file server to upgrade the uh, computers in the uh, town office. It's $35,000 and we did recommend it and we ranked it at number 13. Um, and there's an, the next item uh, has to do with paving the municipal offices and uh, uh, the police department, but, but also um, an entryway to the ballpark. And the, um, the purpose of it is to increase the safety of traffic flow around town hall and the police department, uh, especially when there are um, ball games and there are a lot of parents in their cars driving in and out and there's a lot of congestion. So it's, um, at, at, at first we kind of thought it was, it was a lot of money just to pave the, the uh, uh, police department parking lot, but it, it's actually a lot more than that. Um, you know, once we looked at the plans, it, you know, is much, much more extensive. So we did recommend it, but we placed it at number 15 on the priority list. Um, a evaluation of the town offices has been done by uh, an outfit called GRLA Architects, and they recommended a, a number of repairs to the municipal offices. And this year's request is for $60,000. Um, it's, um, I, don't, I don't think it's been decided exactly what repairs are gonna be done um, but we did recommend 60,000 to get started. And then if you look to the right in your, on your spreadsheet, there's additional, going to be additional requests in the next four years. So we did recommend that and, uh, we ranked it at number 10. Next item is a request for $15,500 for, uh, the, uh, 
building inspection departments uh, permitting software. And uh, this is uh, software which would allow online uh, requests for building permits, which would streamline the permitting process. Uh, it's $15,500 and uh, we did recommend it and we place it at number 11 on the priority list. The next uh, item is uh, also for the building inspection um, department. And this is to archive the um, uh, past building permits um, so that they could easily be searched uh, by, by uh, online. And uh, that's $35,000, but it's, uh, it's a multi-year project. And uh, so we did recommend it. We put it at number 17 out of the 18 requests. Um, the next, the last item under municipal offices is uh, a website conversion or revamp. Um, uh, the feeling is that the town's website is difficult, difficult to navigate and poorly designed. And um, the, and, and Casey feels that it should be upgraded with an estimated cost of $48,000, uh, which we did recommend, and we ranked it at number 12. Okay, so then moving along to the police department, there was one request from the police department for $100,000 for both engineering and, and um, installation of a new HVAC system. Apparently in the summer, uh, the HVAC system in the police department sometimes uh, basically fails. The temperature can uh, rise to 100 degrees. Um, there's also a problem with uh, moisture and uh, potentially a mold and um, Really, in listening to uh, Chief Pachurik's description of what they have to endure when they're wearing uh, bulletproof vests and the temperature rises to 90 degrees and the HVAC system freezes up, it's just, it seems like an unacceptable situation. So, um, so the first step is to, um, is for uh, engineering to decide what to do with it. And then the, the balance is for um, an actual replacement of the system. Uh, so we ranked that at number six, and we did recommend this. Okay, so now flipping over to the, to the next page. Um, number one on the priority list was the ongoing upgrades to the South Deerfield Wastewater Treatment Plant which is $5,724,000. We did recommend it. And uh, again, we, uh, we put that at number one. The highway department made one request this year. Um, they currently have a multi-purpose piece of equipment, which they use to clear sidewalks. Uh, it has a sweeper on it. Um, and it is now inoperable and, and uh, uh, needs extensive repairs. So they have requested uh, a machine called the Wacker Newson WL32F multipurpose loader. And this is a uh, multipurpose machine. It has a, it, it starts out as kind of a mini loader with a bucket. And then it has attachments for uh, including a snowblower, a, um, a V plow, and a sweeper. Um, sounds like the kind of machine that any of us would like to have. The downside is it's $105,000. So we, we did recommend it, um, and we put it at priority number five. Um, the next item is the from the uh, highway department is the roadside mower, which is uh, $26,000. And that's actually reimbursed to us by Eversource. And at the end of this year, we'll own that machine. 
So we recommended that and we, we put that at uh, priority number two. Um, the next item has to do with uh, extensive uh, sidewalk repairs in the downtown area, which we recommended uh, at uh, $503,324. And uh, uh, we, we specified in our vote asphalt rather than concrete because it was considerably less expensive. Uh, and we put that at number 14 on the priority list. Uh, next department is SCEMS. And uh, they made uh, two requests, one for a increase in the size of their parking lot to make it easier to turn ambulances around, et cetera. That's 25,000. Uh, we did recommend that. It's, uh, that's to be paid out of SCEMS return, retained earnings, as well as their second request, which was $30,000 for a exhaust system, an, an exhaust system to, to remove um, diesel exhaust when the ambulances are in the building and need to run. So, um, actually, I was surprised that, that we didn't have that. It's, uh, that's a, that creates serious uh, health issues. So anyway, that's $30,000. We did recommend it. It's number four on the priority list. Again, it's to be paid from uh, SCEMS retain, retained earnings. Um, and then, the, then there's the senior center. We had one request for uh, $42,500 for uh, needs assessment and feasibility study. And this is actually, a, this is like an actually a two part uh, request. The feasibility part, the first part is a professional survey of town residents who try to understand what our citizens want in a senior center. So um, as Chief Paturik explained it, it, the survey itself is designed to uh, get people thinking about what they would like to see in a senior center and then it would be compiled. And once that's done, the feasibility study of rehabbing the current senior center would be engaged using the information from the need assessment. Um, and it, and it might, might go beyond rehabbing the senior center to um, a new building maybe, depending on uh, the results of the needs assessment. Um, so, that request is for, it, it, it's two parts uh, uh, and it's to be paid for by the three towns that participated in the senior center. Deerfield share is 17,500 for the um, needs assessment and it's 25,000 for the feasibility studies. Um, so our committee did recommend that. Uh, and it, uh, we prioritize it at number nine. Um, and the last thing on the list is the library. There isn't really a specific, re re well, I guess there isn't really a specific request this year, although it's shown as a request. It's, it's more of a, you know, a placeholder or a heads up. And we all know that it's coming. The, um, uh, our qualification for the grant may happen this year. So it's, it's kind of the elephant in the room. The, uh, the total cost some years ago was $8 million, most likely quite a bit higher now. And our share would be half of that. So I think everybody is aware of that. So anyway, that's, uh, that's our work for this year. Any, any questions or comments or? Can I just chime in to say I'm super impressed with the Capital Improvement Planning Committee this year. Okay. You guys did a ton of work and ranked everything. And um, having been on that committee a few years ago, I just 
it's really, I, I think that was really great work and really helpful for this committee. I think we have some great members. We, we really have a, a good bunch and we work well together and uh, everybody's really dedicated to it. So but thank you, Allison. It seems like a great, a great process. So I'm, I'm excited for that. Thank you. I agree, this is marvelous. So can you talk just very briefly about the process? Like you came, how did you come up with these rankings and what kind of input you got and what sort of discussions happened to get, do that? Well, I think some of the, some of the items, you know, are, are essential. Sewage, the sewage treatment plant upgrades have, have to continue on. Um, the, to me, the police, the situation in the police department is um, just just has to be corrected. Um, the uh, the two items from SCEMS uh, were pretty easy, partly because they're they're being paid out of retained earnings, and one of them is a you know is a to me is a serious uh, health issue. Um, the um, Jack. Yes. Could, could I stop you for just a minute? Um, sure. the, the, the SCIMS projects, I think they were intended to come from the SCIMS Rental Stabilization Fund. Oh, what a, I'm, I'm using the wrong terminology. Yes. Okay. Uh, so I just thought I would correct that so for the whole group, okay. for all of you. Um, that Rent Stabilization Fund was set up to, to take some of the lease money that we get from SCIMS to use for those kind of building projects. And I think that was the intent. Um, uh, I, think I don't we know were if anybody can speak to that for sure, but. Earnings, but you know, I, but that's, uh, you know, that's, uh, that's somebody else's job. We were just told that, that, that the taxpayers weren't gonna have to pay for it. So, but thank Pretty, you, Brenda. Okay, perfect. Um, you know, the, um, Julie, the the Wacker Newson multi-purpose machine, it, it's it's kind of hard to say no to that when the current machine is broken. And so, what's the alternative? You know, to clearing sidewalks and et cetera. You, you know, I, hiring outside vendors, which is going to be expensive. I you know I I don't know. It's it's uh, um, the um, then the uh, Deerfield Elementary uh, uh, upgrades, they, they've been really good about doing small projects, presenting us with small projects every year that were digestible and um, manageable, and they have a plan. And, you know, I'd hate, I'd hate to see them have to stop now. You know, right. I, I, I might have actually ranked that a little bit higher. I, I don't know. Um, the number uh, number nine is the senior center uh, needs and feasibility. You know, we I, I've been on this committee, I don't know, I don't know how long, seven, eight years, and we've been talking about the senior center um, all of that time, and and it's like we it's embar it's an embarrassing facility, and we need to do something about it. So this, this is the start to get professional help to figure out um, what kind of a center we want and, and where to create it, you know? So, um, you know, then, then as we go down the list from there, um, the municipal offices, um, you know, there's things that need to be done, but um, the, um, the building inspector permitting, I think maybe, maybe could have moved up a notch because that, that would streamline the building inspection department and make it easier for contractors to get, um, uh, building permits, mm -hmm. you know, then as, then as we go down, uh, down farther, You know the, the 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 website conversion is maybe an op, an optional thing. The file server, I, I'm not I'm not quite sure how important that is. Uh, I, I wish Casey was here that she could speak to that more. Right. Uh, you know the sidewalks. 
definitely something needs to be done, but do they have to be done this year? Not necessarily. Uh, the municipal office paving again. It's a it, it, it's a uh, it's a proposal that makes sense, but it's been like that for a hundred years. So you know, it, it's something that could you know be pushed off into the future. More. Yeah, yeah. The capital stabilization fund. That's you know that's really. Uh, I think our plan was to try to build it to a million dollars and then stop. And and uh, Jeff, remind me, what what are we up to now? Eight fifty? Is that right? Right. We're 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 right around eight fifty, Jack. So Rough. if so, we're close. If that didn't happen this year, it's that's not that's not the end of the world. Um, the uh, building inspection archiving. Well, they've been, you know, the, the town office employees have been going through the files for a hundred years and they, they could continue to do so. Obviously it'd be a lot faster and easier and more efficient if they had a, a digital copy of every building permit. But, but again, that could be, and then the frontier requests, well, that's, you know, that's a, To me, that's a, you know that's like a three-town decision that that you know because of our bylaws we got involved in. We had a discussion about whether we should be discussing those items at all. But um, so I, I don't know if that answered your question. It, you know, I guess it kind of did. What what I was actually asking more was like process, just to inform us all what the process was. And it sounds like you had all these people come in and defend their projects to you, and then you as a committee discuss through and set the priorities. I think you did a great job of going through and doing that. Um, so, you know, and in some cases we would, uh, like Jeff went through the uh, police department with Chief Pachurik and, and uh, looked things over. And we went over and we looked at the parking lot and the proposals and we had a, uh, a pretty good plan of, of what was going to be done. Um, so I think Jack, can I jump in for a second? I think this was an ongoing process that the committee has built for for the last couple of years as far as how we approach all the requests and that. So we, we went through all the requests. We decided as a group that we go through all the requests and then we would uh weigh them and vote them uh on one given night instead of trying to vote individually one night and another. And once we voted and weeded through to see what we really needed to address for uh, FY22, then, uh, then we went back and we had already predetermined that because of the number of them. And we kind of did this last year, but we didn't give them a ranking per se, but we tried to go through and prioritize uh, the needs. And so this year with everything, and we knew these numbers were getting pretty big as far as a capital improvement plan, there was, as Jack referred, there were some things that just jumped out that you just needed to, you needed to do. They, they weren't wants, they were needs. And we had to address those. So I think what the committee decided to do is just, uh, decided to apply some good uh, Yankee common sense to this whole process, and we went down through and ranked them on priority and as far as needs. Some of them were more or less a wash, uh, and some of them, you know, you had, to, you had to think about and go through and rank them the best you could. Uh, there's a couple of things, like with... Uh, with the wastewater treatment plant, you know, who wants to spend almost $6 million, but it's a need. I mean, we don't have a choice as a town. We have to do that. The 26,000 for the roadside mower, that was a no brainer because that's a wash because that's reimbursed forever source. The skims, uh, you know, that's, that's from the, and that Brenda, you are correct. That was from uh, the rental fund that we receive uh, for the building. 
So that indirectly, I mean, it is a cost of the taxpayer, but it's not going to hit the budget. That's already that's already there in the fund, and uh, so you just go down through and figure out what's needed. As Jack said, one hundred and five thousand dollars for a, a sidewalk, you know, plow and wow. sweep. You know, that's a that's a big ticket item, but it's a it's a need. There's there's no question about it. We can't we can't get around it. And so what we did was on the on the beginning of the list, we went strictly to the needs where basically you didn't have any choice. And then from that point on, we just walked through. And if we had projects being continued, like uh, with the Deerfield Elementary School, you don't want to stop that. You'd like to keep that moving forward. And uh, one thing I would like to say about the Frontier Regional School, we did have quite a bit of conversation about that as far as even if it met our uh, capital plan criteria. And what you ended up doing, the, the duct cleanings were $10,000 each, and the curtain replacement was 30000 But as we discussed with uh, uh, Frontier Regional School, and fortunately, Ken was involved with that. Uh, we asked about, supposedly the town is going to be receiving money from the state and federal, and as far as the COVID. And so uh, we, were, we asked the select board if they could address that, and, and Casey, if they could address that with, uh, with grant money for the COVID-19 as far as cleaning the duct. I mean, that, to me, is a no-brainer. We should be able to get money to clean those ducks through COVID-19 grant money. And then uh, the other 30000 we did talk about uh, the school with their, uh, yeah, now I think, now, now I forget it, uh, their uh, E&D money, and if they could fund that curtain with the E&D money. That is going to be looked at, but until that happens, we don't know, but we felt that we should probably vote it, and that's why it's ranked, I believe, 18. Right. Can I ask a question? Uh, we've got, you're showing nearly $6 million for wastewater treatment plant upgrades. What have we voted so far? What's the town voted so far? 19. Well, they, they so this money has already been voted by the town. Well, the town yeah. voted nine. Well, isn't it isn't it a little confusing because the town voted nineteen to spend to borrow nineteen million dollars. Right. And this is for the expenditure. Uh, but this is for the ex this is for the actual expenditure. Do we have a choice? So, no. No, but and, and we're not going to actually. Vote this at a town meeting. No, because this has already been voted. That's correct. Correct. So I guess the, you know, I'm, I'm basically asking, do we really need to have this on there but as well, part I, of the project I, plan for 2010? Good, good question. I don't. I don't know if I can answer that. I mean, no. I, I, I was. I was. You know, trying to basically put everyone on the spot, not just you, Jack. I'm not sure. I don't know if the sometimes in some cases like this, the town, our town, our town attorney says, well, the capital committee has to vote it. You know, the, or it wasn't it wasn't voted properly or it wasn't voted adequately or whatever. So I believe the bylaw requires capital planning to approve it. And, and I believe bond council bond council required it to be on the capital plan in order for us to get the USDA grant and and loan. That is correct. Also, also, Skip, I think you need to reflect that on your capital plan so people are aware. Uh, it's more bond issue is a big one. I agree with Brenda. That's part of the push. But also uh, the accountability factor as far as 
even though the town voted to uh, uh, borrow up to nineteen million for this project, I think we're we should at least show some accountability so they know how much of that nineteen is being appropriated for this project at each at each interval at each year. So so it's more or less uh, nice and clean so people can be people can see how this money is being spent and what it's being spent for. And Brenda, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, that dollar amount is what the bids came in for, and that's what our expected expenditure is. And, um, I I don't know that the ex that, that that the bids we don't know what the bids are in total at this point. We know that USDA has approved us to spend um, eleven million four hundred and twenty three thousand. And uh, DPC has done uh, a timeline of how much we were going to spend each of those years to come to that 11 million. So this 5,724,000 is what, would they, what they were expecting that we would be spending in fiscal 22. Does, does that, that answer five, the question for you, David? Yes. Okay. And that 5.7 million is the full cost 25 percent of which comes from the town budget and 75 percent comes from user fees. yes that's a hundred percent of the cost yeah. okay. even after that dollar amount there as you can see uh items two through 18 add up to a pretty hefty chunk of money and that's part of the reason why they were ranked also uh in order the best we could because obviously we're going to have to work with the finance committee and the select board to see what we can afford and what we can't afford and with with a ranking uh you know we we might be able to afford all these, uh, depending on what we have for state and federal assistance here because of the COVID-19 situation. But we may find out that we're coming up short, so we may not be able to address some of these ranked items this year. And we won't know that until we get done with uh, the budget, you know, with the finance committee. Well, and also, I think it's important to note that our that our committee doesn't. We just make a recommendation of the request, and the the bylaws say we're supposed to consider the financial health of the town, and which is always kind of a moving target until the budget is finalized. And, um, you know, so I, I think some of us might want to may, might want to put that more into the mix if we had information and um but you know we 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 just don't and it and maybe it may be impossible that's the that's the job of the finance committee and the and the select board so you know some of us might feel that this is that this this large number of requests is, was really too much for one year uh, but it's not really up to us to um, decide if it's the case or not. I'd just like to add, Jack, that the uh, right now we don't have a definite dollar amount from the latest COVID. And from what I understand, the Frontier Regional and the police station expenditures for HVAC and ductwork probably would be covered by that. Mm-hmm. Sure. So that so that's a that's a good point. There's a perfect example of a of a question mark. Is that it, you know is the money coming from COVID relief funds or not? Nobody knows. So we know it's coming. We just don't know how much. Right. Right. And the the problem that the capital improvement committee has is that we have to complete our plan almost two months ahead 
of what the finance committee and the select board have to complete their plans. So it puts the capital improvement planning committee at a little bit of a disadvantage. So as Jack said, it's kind of like trying to hit a moving target without having all, all the numbers, which makes it very difficult. So the best we can do is basically what you're seeing here uh, for a plan and having it ranked as far as requests. And I personally feel that uh, you folks on the capital improvement have done an excellent job in presenting this. To the Thank town. you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Has his hand up. Go ahead, Skip. Yeah, I, I guess the, at least in some respects, the point that I was trying to make is that $5.7 million is basically out of our hands. We've the town has said, yeah, spend it, put the plan together, we're going to do it one way or the other. If it isn't 5.7, it's 4.8 or it's 6.2. You know, it's really, uh, and I guess there are bids out on some of this stuff with some of them coming back in this week. Mm -hmm. Right. That, so, is that true, Amanda? So that, that, that should probably be in some separate category and not. Yeah totaled along with all the other requests because it's as you say it's the the, the money's already been uh borrowed the money's money we've committed to spending the money so mm -hmm. it's, yeah i agree and and, and you know so that it, while we're talking about 5.7 million we're you know we're not talking about the roadside mower right. i mean that we're going to get anyways but what i'm saying is it's the smaller items that we really, at this point in time, need to, you know, to, to and you guys have done a pretty good job of prioritizing. Uh, so basically, what's your article going to look like? That article, it's the capital improvement article. So I don't know that we're... No, the capital improvement committee puts that together. No, we don't. We don't put any. We don't put the articles together. We we make our recommendations, and then the the finance committee and the select board come up with the. You know, it, in in years past, right. we we've declined to recommend items, and the and they ended up on the warrant. So, right. In in the end, the finance committee and select board uh, do make that decision and then I I write the article uh, based on what the decision was from from all the committees and where the funding sources are I think also tonight we're just discussing this and you're presenting it to us but we're not voting anything on this tonight right we're just taking in information and using it to uh, right. I think Sorry. I May I jump in just for a second? I think there's a joint meeting coming up of finance, select board, and uh, capital improvement committee. Yeah, so next week we have a public this. hearing. We, we're supposed to have a public hearing, which we have, we're going to do this again next. next right. I, uh, think it's, I think they're talking. I don't know. I don't want to talk out of term here, but I believe it's like the seventh, maybe. Right. It's supposed to be the seventh at six p.m. Right. So it's going to be posted as a public hearing. Right. Uh, with the uh, select board, the finance committee, and uh, our committee. Right. And, and according according to the capital improvement bylaw, the capital improvement committee presents it to the select board. And the select board in the finance committee then uh, discuss that and vote it however they see fit. Because as Jack referred to before, remember, we're only doing recommendations here. We're not approving anything. Yeah, and it's, it's going to be presented to the public, too. Right. I hope so. I hope public uh, attends in, uh, in greater numbers than they usually do. But. 
that'd be great. So it looks like from your plan that there are some people who have given you long-term plans with costs every year, as it looks like the elementary school has done that, it looks like the uh, highway department has done that. Um, and maybe the municipal office repair piece is laid out. Um, right, these are anticipated costs for future years. And some of them are ongoing items. See, that, that's not the that's not the point I'm trying to make. The point I'm trying to make is that the, these people have done their job properly, and that we want to encourage all of the departments to have that same long-term thought process and give you a nice solid input. Right? Correct. Right. That's part. That's kind of part of the uh, the, re the request process um, I don't know, I'm just looking at our old spreadsheet the other question I have is related the capital stabilization fund is there a philosophy on when to use it well that's a that's a good question um, I think the the purpose of it, and, and Jeff, you disagree with me if you want. The purpose of it is to is to have a fund for like emergency capital projects or un, unanticipated capital projects that uh, might put a particular burden on the town. Uh, that was not that was not the intent that uh, when we brought this to the floor four or five years ago. Okay, so what? Um, I'd be interested in hearing what what it what it was. It was it was it was my understanding that once we built this fund up, uh, that this would be the fund that would be used to withdraw from on an annual basis for the capital improvement projects, not not the five and a half million dollars for the wastewater treatment plant. But the dollars, the dollars that we take out every year to, to replace a pickup truck or a car or you know file server, and and then we would put back into the fund a constant amount annually, so that we could more or less depend on saying, look, we're going to put two hundred, two hundred fifty thousand dollars into the capital improvement project fund, and if we take out 350,000 this year, uh, or 100,000 this year, whatever it is, it's not skewing the budget, which is typically what happens with capital improvement items. If you look at an apartment budget, it goes up 2%, 3% every year, more or less. The, the capital improvement budget is all over the place for good reason, uh, not for you know, if you, if you need to replace a piece of equipment and that piece of equipment costs a hundred thousand bucks, uh, that'll take up, you know, and it, up half of the 200,000 that you're putting in. Am I, am I getting, being clear? Am I not making sense on this? I think that's clear, Skip, but I'm just going to summarize to see if I've got it right. But the, the idea is that the, the capital stabilization fund is what funds all of these projects which will fluctuate in cost year to year we expect that and then we would contribute annually a steady amount which may need to increase with inflation or something like that but it would be a predictable steady amount so that even though the fund may fluctuate with the expenses over time we're able to cover all of those costs in a predictable way i should have let you explain it before i needed i needed to hear it from you <laughs> so may i also Jump and in here a second. Total sense, but so yeah. when and how does that process start? Who who's, who gets it going? We've got it going by setting up the by setting up the fund, and we're not far away from that. the The number that was thrown out was a million dollars in the stabilization fund, and we're we're close to that. We're not there yet, but we're close. So we could theoretically use some of it this year and then replenish it? 
I, I would I mean if you wanted if we were Brenda, how much how much is in that fund at this point in time off hand? Uh, I think Jeff brought it up earlier. Was it eight hundred and thirty five thousand? Yeah, it was around mm -hmm. around eight hundred and fifty thousand, I think. Eight hundred and thirty five. <laughs> Eight hundred and fifty thousand. Let me let me just jump in here for a second, though. If we all remember correctly, four or five years ago, the the, the capital supposedly the capital stabilization fund basically it existed, but it was running zeros. It was running zeros for several years, and what was happening is we if we couldn't afford capital projects out of free cash then they just got ignored. And that's part of the problem that we're running into now with some of our town buildings that we own. Because that of what was ignored, part of that was maintenance. And we weren't doing any maintenance on our buildings for years because we didn't have the funds out of the uh, free, so-called free cash account. So the idea was to push for a capital stabilization fund, start to put funds in there so we would actually have something earmarked for capital projects instead of hoping that we would have money left over in the free cash fund. Also, it uh, puts you in a situation by going to capital stabilization fund that it would uh, separate the needs from the wants, because it takes two-thirds vote to get that money approved to, to be spent. So the idea was to build that capitalist stabilization fund up to roughly about a million dollars. And then as we went along, I think Skip and, and uh, yeah. Allison. Allison, thank you. Allison explained it quite well as far as how we should address that. And uh, and I think I think that's important to keep in mind because uh, you know when can you spend it? Well, we may find out. We may have to address it this year if we don't have free cash and there's a need on some of these first you know six, seven, eight, nine items. We we may have to tap into the capital stabilization fund to try to address some of those immediate needs. And if we can handle it within the budget, if we, as David mentioned before, we don't know how much uh, federal or state money we may have coming back, that would be nice. And if we were able to handle the request and not have to tap into the capital stabilization fund, hey, that would be great. And be able to handle it with uh, free cash, fine. But we might not be able to do that. So... I, I, myself personally, I'm happy that we have a capital stabilization fund. I think it's very important, and I think it's important to maintain that for for future issues coming down the road. Because if you take a look at that, uh, those plans, some of those numbers are pretty big that we have coming down the road here over the next four or five years uh, with whether they be wants or needs from the towns. I mean, you, you hear several people talking about a whole lot of different ideas, and the money's got to come from someplace. So that's that's all I have at the moment. Jim? Go ahead, Jim. Um, I, I do just want to point out that, unfortunately, it seems like the stabilization fund is at kind of an inconvenient number right now because it's not big enough to pay for sewage treatment plant or a new library, but it's, it's a, a, just maintaining it at its current level is more or less equivalent to all of the other minor capital improvement expenditures. So it seems wow. like we're building up a fund, and then, but we're also paying for capital expenditures that the fund isn't big enough to pay for. So, I mean, I don't want to say what good is it, but it, it seems like- It's a good point. Uh, I, I understand what you're saying, Jim, but remember we started off, we started off with zero about four or five years ago, and it's going to take a while to build this fund up. 
and I agree with you, Jim. It's where's the money coming from? And I think it's what we can afford as a town as far as how it's going to impact that capital stabilization fund. My take on this is that the, am I interrupting somebody? I can't tell. No, go. Okay. Go, Allison. My take on this is that the, um, these really big ticket items, these multi-million dollar projects, um, and this is a little bit like what Skip was saying earlier, um, you know, we, we have to take loans for those. We're never going to be able to fund those out of our savings account, which is sort of how my mind is thinking about um, We have to take loans, and that's going to add debt, you know, that, that we'll be paying over a long period of time. Hopefully, in most cases, that'll be planable, and we can anticipate, you know, what those costs will be before taking out a big loan, like we, like we were able to do with the sewer, even though it feels like it happened suddenly. Um, it didn't. And if we view this fund as um, similar to South County's retained earnings, um, right, this is like our savings. So we may we may deplete it at some times and we'll be able to pay ourselves back for it so that what we're taxing the town for our regular routine capital purchases, um, predictable, you know, a predictable steady amount so that tax rates don't fluctuate so much. And I think there's a lot of value in that. But. I wonder if perhaps as a as an accounting or budgeting method we should split those apart then oh. that there should be like routine expense routine capital expenditures like a new a new uh, backhoe or something and then i don't know call them extraordinary expenditures like a new sewage treatment plan i like that idea um and i think that they should probably all go through capital improvement as part of our you know, policies that we that we right. have. Um, I don't know if that's bylaw or. I guess what I'm really thinking is that when presented at the town meeting, they should be separated out somehow. I agree, and and clearly labeled so that you know we know that this has already been, we've already voted to borrow this money, and these are projects that won't happen if we don't vote them. I feel like that's a pretty important distinction. Jim, that is, that is the intent, or that was the intent. Uh, four or five years ago when we set this up. We're not, you know, the uh, sewage treatment plant, that, that money's gonna be borrowed. It's gonna be debt, it's gonna be debt excluded. In other words, it's not, we don't have to get that in underneath the two and a half cap. Okay. Okay, so, the, and now we've got these other projects, 100,000 this year, 350,000 next year or whatever it is, we need to be able to fund those. And those do need to fall underneath that two and a half cap. Right. So, I mean, I think that should be broken, broken out. Okay. But the term uh, stabilization in the name of the fund is doing it that, and if you had a nice solid, <laughs> going out several years, you could look at the prediction and say that, you know, in year 2025 is going to be really bad. Or I'm looking at this year and I'm wondering, is this year the year really, really bad? And maybe we should be using some of that capital stabilization to stabilize this year and not next year. But I, I personally don't feel like I have enough background to make that okay. decision. Can I pipe in? Go ahead, David. Uh, Capital stabilization fund, as Skip said, and you know I'm actually agreeing with Skip. Uh, it was there to stabilize our budget. It wasn't for the large projects like the sewer treatment plant and things like that. It was for the other large expenditures that the town will account over a period of time. Like, say we have a dump truck that failed. Uh, we needed a new payloader, or something like that. Instead of that hitting our budget all at once, we can take from the capital stabilization fund to spread that out. Uh, it's actually a format that the South Deerfield Fire District has been using for years to keep their budget stable. So when they're buying fire apparatus and stuff, you don't see a large spike. Um, and you know, the, the Skip said that uh, I believe it was Skip was saying that was zero funded for a number of years. So it was Jeff. And about five, six years ago, when I was on the board before, we started that, putting the funds aside and making sure that we were stabilizing. So situations like this year, when there's going to be things like the mower, 
that's 105,000. If it's going to be a hardship on our budget, we bring a separate article to the floor and take that money out of the stabilization fund. And, you know, and like you said, it's a two thirds vote. So it's not money that's just willy nilly that's there. To, you know, there has to be a, a good need for it and be presented as such to the town. I might like to return to this conversation about how much should go in capital stabilization and where these this funds for capital projects should come to when we've made a little more progress on the rest of the budget. Right, yeah. Uh, normally I'm not a proponent of putting things off until we've done more budget, but I think in this situation, it might be really valuable to get and get the big picture. But I'd like to leave enough time to have a meaningful discussion. I, I know budget season gets a little tight at the end. I agree with Allison uh, because right now we're dealing with too many unknowns and that's why I said, uh, once this is presented to the Select Board and Finance Committee, at that point, the Finance Committee and the Select Board are going to have to figure that out at the end here. Uh, we're, we're, the Capital Committee is two months premature as far as trying to determine this. And we still, as Dave referred, we still don't know what we may be getting from the state and the federal. So we don't know how this is really going to impact the overall budget. So uh, with Allison, I agree. It's it's something that I think we need to just simply decide we're going to discuss at a later date when we gather more information. Yep, I agree. So we've gotten to 7 o'clock. Um, I'm just, John Presky, I see your hand up. Why don't you go ahead and then... Uh, John, you need to unmute. Sorry, I'm uh, just wondering when the Finance Committee is going to vote on the plan. What's that? Nah. What you... Because there's going to be a joint meeting with the Select Board and the Capital Improvement Committee next week, right? Do we want to wait till after that meeting to vote? Yes. I, I... I was kind of under the understanding that was going to be finance, capital, and uh, the select board. Right. I'm glad you've mentioned this meeting because this is the first I've heard of it and I, I can be present, but that's just luck. I'll second that, Allison. It's the first I heard of it. I, I could be wrong. You better check with uh, uh, Casey. I think that's what the plan was. Yeah, yeah that, was, that was the plan. That's my notes yeah. clearly. Really state. We have a finance committee meeting next Tuesday, the 6th at 5 o'clock. That's our regular finance committee meeting. And then this other meeting will be on the 7th at 6 o'clock. So the next night. Um, regarding voting on the capital plan, um, my opinion is that we should wait until we have all of the budgets in um, and Brenda comes up with a recommendation to us for um, how it all goes together and how much comes out of each account. Um, at that point, look at, we have our prioritized list and I assume we'll just go down the priority list until we run out of money. Right, and like Jeff and somebody else had alluded to, uh, we know that there's more money coming and uh, through ARPA, and we don't know what that can be spent on at this point. So that might change what we decide to approve as well. While we have Jack Davey with us, are there any other questions anybody has on the from the um, Capital Improvement Committee. I would just like to make one quick comment, just uh, if I read the bylaw correctly, the Capital Improvement Committee just makes their recommendation to the uh, select board in the public meeting. 
and then the select board actually presents with the finance committee when it comes time to vote it. So the the capital improvement committee just simply recommends at this point, which we would be doing Tuesday, I mean Wednesday night, I believe it is, in the joint meeting to the select board and if finance committee is there. And then according to the bylaw, if I read it correctly, uh, the select board would work with the finance committee as far as actually voting the capital improvement plan. Jack, is that your impression? I, I think you're right. I think you're right. I think I think maybe Casey got a little ahead of herself. I don't I don't because I think we, we're supposed to have a public hearing, which we do uh, in a meeting with the select board and it's posted that way. And actually it hasn't been posted on the website yet. Finance committee necessarily has to be in that in that meeting. But it's like tonight's meeting, Jack. We got 18 people on the call right now. So it's you know it's a posted meeting. Uh, yeah, the seventh is our regularly scheduled meeting for the select board. Well, yeah, you have a regular scheduled meeting for 6:15. So well, that's what time we're starting. Yeah, but it's that day. So I guess we're going to have to clarify with Kate with Casey. Casey, yeah. Yeah. Exactly how that's going to going to be scheduled. Well, the so. the ultimate goal was to try to get make sure that the three committees are actually working together and having right. a unified front coming into this budget. Right. It's not going to be adversarial like it has been in the past. Right. Correct. So I'm just going to follow up with Casey just to clarify exactly when when I should post our, our meeting for and then uh, then we'll um, go from there, I guess. Yeah. So we don't need to vote to accept your plan or anything tonight, right? That is correct. You, my understanding is you do not need to vote tonight to accept the plan. Uh, when the select board presents to you or discusses with you, then you can vote at, at that point in time. Once we have That's more. my understanding of, of the bylaw. I hope I'm reading it correctly. All right. And if we were supposed to vote, Casey will tell us. <laughs> and we'll do it next week. Yep. Yep. <laughs> All right. Or she'll be on it if she expected that to happen and it didn't. <clears throat> All right. Well, we're meeting next Tuesday and next Wednesday, so we should be able to take care of it then if we need to. Yeah. Um, is there anything else we need to talk about tonight? Uh, the only thing we had still on the list from last, uh, the last meeting was um, the wastewater treatment plant, but uh, debt. We didn't go through the debt sheet or the summary sheet, and that can wait till next next week if you want um, to just yeah. to keep the meeting to the to the two hours. Let's do that. Let's save it for next week. I think we're a little lighter next week anyway. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I'm trying to work that out with Casey. I think she's going to be presenting her budgets next week, uh, okay. but there might be some delay in the Board of Health budgets. Uh, maybe we talk about uh, education, but I figured you and I could talk about that later this week. Got it. All righty. In that case, I think we're ready for a motion to adjourn. Our next meeting is next Tuesday at five o'clock. Next Tuesday at five o'clock, April 6th. Make a motion to adjourn. I'll second it. Anybody have any last minute questions, discussion? Doesn't sound like it. Jim Cambius. Aye. John Presky. Aye. Skip Olmstead. Aye. John Paturik. Aye. Jeff Upton. Aye. 
Julia Chalfant, I, Allison Vandervelden. Aye. Alrighty. Seven zero, we're unanimous.